Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, range sum of a BST. And a BST is basically called a binary search tree. And it's a tree based data structure, which follows a certain set of rules. And I'll be going over what those rules are real quickly. So first, let's see what the question over here is. So given the root node of a binary search tree, return the sum of values of all nodes with a value in the range low comma high. So the square brackets over here means it is inclusive. What that means is our range is inclusive of whatever the low number is and whatever the high number is. So a low number and everything between low and high and the high number is going to be in our range. So now real quickly, what is a BST? So BST is a tree based data structure and how it works is given a certain root uh, node, everything to the left of that root node is going to be less than whatever the root node is. Simultaneously, everything to the right of that certain root node is going to be greater than whatever the current root is. So real quickly, let's look at this example. We have 10. So 10 over here is our root. So everything to the left of 10 should be less than 10. So 5, 3, and 7 are all less than 10, while 15 and 18 are greater than 10. One more example real quickly. Let's take 5 as our root. Everything to the left of 5 should be less than it, and it is, which is the number 3. And everything to the right of 5 has to be greater than it, which in this case is the number 7. All right, so now that you understand what a binary search tree is, let's see how we can solve this question. So uh, by looking at this question, if you know how tree traversals work, we will be using something called an in-order traversal. So let's just go over what that means, and it's really simple to understand how the question works. All right, so in an in-order traversal, what you do is you go to the leftmost node, then you go to the root node, and then you go to the rightmost node. So an in-order traversal is best used in a binary search tree because uh, the main idea is the leftmost node in a binary search tree is going to be the smallest value, whereas the rightmost node is going to be the greatest value. And that's pretty intuitive. So that's kind of using that idea, we're going to have this traversal. And again, real quickly, it's called in-order. All right. So let's see how an in-order traversal is going to work. So in this case, uh, just for the sake of the question, I'm going to ignore the low and high values just for now, okay? So let's see how the in-order traversal works. So let's start off with our root. So our root is 10, and now we're gonna go to the left of it, which is five. Now we're gonna go to the left of five, which is three, and now we go to the left of three. So the left of three is actually a leaf, right? So three is a leaf, we don't have any children nodes. So in that case, we're gonna add three to our list over here. And it also makes sense because three is the smallest number. So now what's gonna happen is we're gonna go to three, we add three, and now we're gonna go to the right of three, and well, there's nothing, okay? So now you go back one step, five. So in this case, we went, we already visited everything to the left of five, which is the number three. So now, uh, since we already went to the left, now we're gonna go to the root, so we add five, and now we're gonna go to the right. So when you go to the right, you have the number seven. So before adding seven, technically what would happen is you would go to the left of seven, which is nothing. So now you would add seven, and then you would go to the right of seven, which also does not exist. So by the end of this, we have the numbers three, five, and seven, and they are in ascending order. So what this basically is telling us is that we've already taken care for everything to the left of 10. So everything to the left of 10 is taken care of. So now we go back to the root node, which is 10. So since we got everything on the left, we're gonna get the root node itself, which is 10. So now we add 10 and now we look on to its right. So now we're gonna go on to 15, okay? So before adding 15, we're gonna go to the left of 15, which does not exist. So then in that case, we just add 15. Now we're gonna go to the right of 15, then which is 18. Check the left of 18 does not exist. Then we're gonna add 18. And that's the end of it, right? So over here, we have our uh, in order traversal. And this is how it looks. It is in ascending order, exactly how it's supposed to be. Now let's see how we can get our answer using this. So what we're gonna do is we can just directly look for everything in the certain range itself. So basically we have seven, then we have 10 and 15. Uh, sorry, that's 15, not 13. All right, so we have those three numbers and you can just add them up. So seven plus 10, 17, uh, and then 17 plus 15, 27, 32, right? So you will get an answer of 32 over here, right? And that is the correct answer. Yeah, it is the correct answer, right? But in this case, what we did is we actually traversed through the entire binary search tree. And in a smaller binary search tree, it doesn't really matter. But what if you have a bigger BST? It would just be a waste of time traversing through the nodes, which we're not even going to end up using. So to kind of save that time up, 
we're going to kind of optimize this in order traversal and let's see how we can do it side by side. So now what's going to happen is the same thing. We're going to start off at the node 10. I'll just use the color red to indicate this. So we're starting off at the node 10. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left. So now we go end up at five. So before we actually go all the way to the left, we're going to do a small check. And before I say that, uh, one real quick thing, once you go to the left of five, everything to the left of five is going to be less than five. And keeping that in mind, we know that our lower bound value over here is seven. So anything less than five is completely useless for us. So in that case, we are not going to go to the left of five. So now in that case, that leads us back to the number five. So now the question is, do we add five or not? And to kind of check that, all we need to see is, is five in between seven and 15? And it is not, right? And again, we're looking at the inclusive range, okay? So seven and 15 are included. So five is not in between. So in that case, uh, we are not going to add five. Now we go to the right, which is seven, right? So again, everything to the right of five is going to be uh, greater than five. So the possibility in this case is six, seven, or eight, right? Or nine, right? And again, six is not gonna matter since it doesn't meet the requirement. But in this case, we have the number seven. So in this case, uh, since seven is in our range, we are going to add it to our traversal. Now we go back up since we got rid of everything on the left. So now we're gonna check, do we add 10 or not? And to do that, it's pretty the same thing. 10 is greater than seven and less than 15. So we add it over here. All right, so now we go on to the right. And the reason we're going on to the right is because the high boundary over here is 15. So we are going to go to the right of 10, which has values greater than 10. So now we're at the number 15. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check, is okay, should we go to the left of 15? And the answer is yes, we should go to the left of 15 because um, that is still going to be inside of our range. But in this case, there is nothing on the left of 15. We have none. So in that case, we actually won't be able to do anything. So now we go back up to our root, which is the value 15. And we are going to add the number 15 because it is in our range. And finally, now the question is, do we go to the right of 15? And the answer is no, because everything to the right of 15 is going to be greater than 15. And our higher bound itself is 15. So there's no point in crossing whatever is higher than the higher boundary over here. So now what you can kind of notice is we just got the three numbers that actually fit in our criteria, which is seven, 10, and five, and seven, 10, five, sorry, not five, 15. And when you add them up, you get the same answer of 32. It takes up a lot lesser time and memory, okay? So now let's just see how we can code this. It should be pretty simple. And yeah, okay, so over here, we're gonna have a variable and we're gonna call this sum, so sum underscore. And I'm not using sum because sum is a function in Python, okay? So this is going to end up equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing using self is because I'm gonna make it an attribute of the class so we can refer to it inside of our function. So you can kind of treat it as a global variable. All right, so over here, we're gonna have our in order traversal, okay? So each time we're gonna be giving it the root value. And now inside of this, we're going to have the two, con so let's just write it down real quickly what the three kind of things we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do in order and we're gonna call it on the left node, okay? Uh, then another thing that we're gonna do is in between. So first we go to left and then we're gonna add that value. So to add the value, or in other words, to take care of the root value, we're gonna do self.sum underscore, and we're gonna add whatever the value is for the root uh, node we're on. So self.sum under, self underscore plus equals to root dot value. And now we're gonna go to the right, okay? So left, root, right. That's exactly what I'm writing over here. So this is kind of our template, and this is how a normal in order would look like. But now in this case, we wanna add our conditions. And before we do that, there is really no stopping point to this, right? Even once we reach a leaf, this is gonna keep going on and on and on. There's no stopping point. So to ensure that we end up stopping at some point, we're gonna check if our root has a value. So if this is confusing, this is actually the same as writing if root not equal to none. All right, and only in that case, we're gonna go inside of this. So to just simplify it, you can just check if root, okay? So now we have this, perfect. And this is our very basic in order traversal. So now let's add uh, the conditions with the low and high boundaries. So in this case, uh, what is the condition going to be for root.left? So for root.left, we're gonna check if, if the root.val val, uh, value, so root.val 
has to be greater than our lower value. And only in that case, we're going to end up calling this function. It's the same as what we just went over, okay? Now, when do we add the value? So we're only going to add this value when it is inside of our boundary. So to do that, we're going to do if low is uh, less than or equal to root.val. And simultaneously, we're going to check if it is um, if the root of val is less than or equal to our high value, okay? And if it is inside of our boundaries, and uh, since it's inclusive, we're doing equal to as well. And in that case, we're going to put this inside and we're going to add it to our sum. And finally, uh, when do we call on our right node? So for doing this, we're just going to do if root dot val is less than our high uh, boundary. And in that case, we're going to do the in order function on the right node. So finally, all that is left to do is we need to call the function itself. So to do that, we're going to call in order and we're going to call it with the root node in the very beginning. And at the ending, uh, this value is going to get updated and we're going to end up returning that. So return uh, self, sorry, self dot sum underscore. And that should be it. So submit our solution. And yeah, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.